This is Paul. Yes. Uh -huh. Timeshare registration requirement violation. <laughs> Just give me the timeshares, right? And then there's trading in office and trading in special influence. <laughs> now, uh, these are both Class C felonies. Okay. <laughs> Let's say I email those in office about my civil rights being violated, and <laughs> you decide not to do anything for the last two and a half years. <laughs> and then I email you in the last two days about uh, breaking and entering, right? Destruction of personal property, theft of rental property. Ouch! And you're saying, well, I'm so sorry. We can't really help you, police department, uh, deputy fish. Poo. You'll just have to wait until the renter calls, and then they can open the door, and you can sleep there, or you can get your stuff, or whatever the agreement was. Right. <laughs> now, somebody said that if you don't have any money, you don't have any rights in the United States. <laughs> Have you been trading in your office the actual enforcement of the laws because you just don't want to call me or you don't want to email me? Ooh. I've seen quite a few different sheriff's vehicles drive by. I've seen police officers drive by. <laughs> and it, it seemed like um, this trading of office where you're on the payroll and unless you pay, you can't get the sheriff to do a fucking thing. It's a Class C felony. Well... I don't have a pocket. I'm not in your front pockets and I'm not in your back pocket. So every time you got paid to not enforce the law, that would be trading an office. <laughs> if you have to get some sort of kickback, poo -ah, <laughs> I'm going to find out and then I'll put you away for another, oh, see, uh, five years, $10,000. <laughs> now, the special influence of those in the community that have the money that are the seniors, yes, <laughs> Have uh, have you allowed them to influence the independence of the judiciary? <laughs> well, I know they made you, okay? They groomed you, they planned it. To, and, well, you get another five years and $10,000 fine. Oops, you'll get a tort lawsuit. <laughs> and uh, you're saying that I'm never going to have my rights enforced. Trading and influence. Mm-hmm. Not very good, Sheriff. Seems like you don't really enforce the laws for every person unless they're in one of your pockets. Oh, 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 oh. Did we look at this? Residential burglary uh, is a Class B felony. Yes. A requesting unlawful compensation. Well, how much are you going to pay me, Sheriff? How much are you going to pay me? <laughs> now, um... Somehow we got on the T's, but I don't think we looked at that. Which, rendering criminal assistance? We didn't go through that. How did I get all the way over there? Oh, we, uh, possession of stolen something. What's it say here? It's a Class B felony. Oh, no. That's not. Oh, possessing and captioning. Oh, personal identification documents. <laughs> You know, I think we had skipped ahead. There's quite a few that we hadn't talked. Possession of stolen mail. <laughs> I don't know how we got that far ahead. Mm -hmm. Obtaining signature by deception or duress. Uh, offering false instrument for filing a record. What is a court document called? Ouch. Uh, Miss Prison of Treason. Yeah, we're way ahead here. we got to go way back. Huh. Malicious prosecution. Ouch. Malicious mystery too. Huh. But, uh, excuse me, yeah, mm -hmm. lottery fraud, that's where we were at, yes, I remember, yes, <laughs> leading organized crime, the next is mail theft, do you remember that, pooch, the class C felony, <laughs> for those that are in the, <laughs> in the conspiracy, it's only a misdemeanor, a gross misdemeanor, <clears throat> um, just so I know, for all the certified mail and all the time that you sent it for the last five years to 1030, 1023 Kitchen Dick Road, uh -huh. anything that wasn't returned unclaimed mail, anything that you sent there and somebody thought, well, I'll just throw it away, but it was really mail theft. <laughs> then there's malicious harassment, a Class C felony, <laughs> being homeless, poor, indigent, and a pauper. Pooch. Isn't it kind of malicious harassment for... I think it is. Okay. Oh, uh, 
then malicious mischief deciding to throw the bed out in the garage was it the renters Ooh, that would be malicious mischief in the second degree oh class c felony you break the locks on the house you decide to take the mattress off you probably moved it someplace else then you brought it back and you threw it in the garage malicious mischief now there's that malicious prosecution class c felony yes I would say it's malicious prosecution to prosecute me for a crime where you have the evidence that I wasn't there. Proof, sure. Now, as a conspirator, okay, it's a gross misdemeanor. <sighs> you know, for all the times that I told you, well, why don't you just make the call and tell him I wasn't in Brendan, Washington? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that whole thing about cyber stalking, but then you sat on it for six days and it happened seven weeks before then. Oh. I think it is malicious prosecution. I think I can prove that uh, to a jury of my peers. <laughs> In fact, I can. I can. I think I. I. You know. I think I can. Okay. <laughs> the malicious prosecution where the allegation of domestic violence happened seven weeks before. Pooch. More than likely, you had information of it, or a school employee, or possibly welfare. Pooch. Crisis responder. Yes. They probably told you about it, and they said, "Well, we we don't want the sheriff involved. We want you to just sit on it." And <laughs> you as Oh, fuck. That's 